and pause recording. Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. Hi. We're just getting things started, making sure it's shared out to all the proper places. But welcome, welcome to the premiere episode of Spirit Chat with Mari and Winterbrook. We're very excited to have everybody here. Uh, we're just getting all the technical pieces going here. Winter, let me know when uh, you have it on Facebook and then I will share it. Okay. Okay, cool. It Thank like goodness we, we have our it. technical advisor in the back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a, a good face thing. I made. <laughs> now, what do I do? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, give us one second, everyone, making sure everything is going where it needs to be. Oh, there you are. I'm looking very confused. Okay. Yeah, All right. Mari and I are great with the dead people and the animals, <laughs> but give us the tech stuff. We defer mm. to our children. We definitely respect their superior knowledge on how to operate this. So. All right, I think it's going. I think uh, Sierra wants to check. I think it's working. Both of them are working. Okay. I went to the awesome. I don't see it on mine. Um, you can't do it quickly like that. Yeah, I think it's, I saw it on Facebook. So go. I think it's going. Thanks everyone who joined us. Let me know winter when you're ready. And I want to. This way, okay. Yeah. All right, so let's start this. We're only two minutes late, and I'm going to turn this off. Um, Mari, I'm so Hi. glad to be here. Finally, this has been a, a project in the works, and I'm grateful for all of you that have um, joined us on, in the Zoom page. And if you're coming in now, I'll let I'll be letting you in. It's okay if you're uh, late. This is not law school, so we won't lock the door on you. <laughs> and um, for those of you on Facebook land, I know that there is a uh, lag. Um, so we will try to read messages if we can, but um, yes. the best way to get questions uh, today is to be in the Zoom room. So with that, I'm gonna... Okay, yeah, I'm just making sure you're on my phone and... Yeah, so this is something that Winter and I decided to do, this new show, and we're still figuring out the whole streaming situation, so forgive us if it's not 100% there, but we wanted to come on and really just talk about everything to do with spirit. Um, if I can go first, Winter, and do introductions, if that's good. Um, if people who don't know me, my name is Mari Kartagenova, otherwise known as Media Mari because my last name is incredibly long and much too hard to say. Um, and I am a psychic medium and animal communicator. And uh, I've been doing this work for a very long time. And honestly, it's my privilege to connect with spirit and connect with animals. Um, I also do some lost and missing animal work as well as missing people work sometimes. Um, but basically it's just a privilege to be working with spirit and connecting to the other side every day and just welcome everybody that's here. And, you know, we welcome your questions, your input. We'd love to hear about what speakers or topics you're interested in. Um, cause this is really going to be a audience driven show because we want to provide whatever it is you guys are interested in. So, um, we will talk a little bit more about our backgrounds and everything, but that's a little short blurb on me and, uh, take it away winter. Hi. So let's see if I can be just as short and brief, um, as Mari, she's actually a fabulous medium and animal communicator. And we've known each other, what, four years now? five years maybe yeah yeah I don't yeah. I'm losing track of time I don't know yeah and um so you want to take over admitting um sure then, absolutely uh, oh thanks you got it so um my name is Winterbrook 
and I am a professional psychic medium. I'm also a trance medium, and I um, sit for unfoldment, that's the actual term, for physical mediumship as well. Uh, and right now, I'm um, pretty good at transfiguration, and spirit can uh, arrange some phenomena. Uh, so those are the areas. I also do animal communication. Um, and past lives, um, uh, spirit guides. I work a lot with the spirit guides. And uh, those are the areas I pretty much practice. I do a lot of public speaking. I've been to over 55 uh, libraries on Long Island. I love working at libraries. And I have been at colleges lecturing and demonstrating as well. I teach up at the Lilydale Assembly uh, during the summer. And this summer I'll be up there teaching trance and um, also medium, uh, evidential mediumship, uh, incorporating some aspects of trance into that. So I Mary, actually spirit told me um, I was going to be doing something like this. And I said, really? And two days later, uh, Mari reaches out and said, would you like to do this? And I thought this would be fabulous. I loved connecting with people. And uh, like most people, I haven't been able to see people in person too much with um, the pandemic. So I've actually found a, a, a love for Zoom because now I realize I can see lots of people, even the ones that aren't physically located near me. And doing a show like this with Mari and having you guys come and we talk uh, metaphysics and spiritual topics, I'm all in. So I've been looking forward to this, and um, I'm so happy for those of you joining us in the Zoom room, as well as those of you out in Facebook land. We will upload the uh, recordings to our YouTube channels, and the next show we do, we will have a streaming service, uh, you know, using being able to directly do it from YouTube. So uh, bigger and better, and but we're just glad you guys are here for the first show. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that I'm here with you, Winter. And for anyone that doesn't know about trance mediumship, Winter is an amazing trance medium. I mean, I have not seen her in person, but I've seen a lot of photographs and videos. And it's amazing when she goes into trance and there's literally different faces that come over her. And it's really unbelievable. So I'm definitely looking forward to that episode. I do a little trance myself, definitely not as much as you do, but I'm really looking forward to chatting about that. Um, I'm just making sure that everybody's let in. I keep seeing things flashing on my screen. So if I look like I'm a little deer in the headlights, it's the technical part because like, you know, you can't, I always tell my kids, you can't be good at everything, right? You know, so it's like, I can talk to dead people and animals, but maybe the computer, not so much. So um, I guess we were talking about just sort of giving everybody a little bit of our background and sort of how we got involved in this, because <clears throat> that's one of the number one questions that I get and probably winter too, and we have different stories. And so I thought people might be interested about, you know, how we got to do this. Um, for people that, you know, that don't know me or have never met me, like I'm, you know, a normal person. I don't fly around the room or on unicorns or anything crazy. I don't have a crystal ball, although you can use one if you like to, because um, I meet people and I'm just a normal soccer mom. And so sometimes when they find out what I do, they're a little like, oh, you know, like, how come you're not really weird? Um, and it's because most of us that do this aren't really weird. I mean, I guess if you think what we do is weird than we are, but in terms of we're normal people just like you, and, you know, we have our families and our lives, and it's just, we've been able to sort of um, fine tune this connection to the other side. And, you know, everybody is able to do this as well. It's not just like we have a special power, you know, people say, oh, it's so amazing. And, it is really amazing, no doubt, but it's like if you wanted to be a bodybuilder, you know, you wouldn't eat Oreos every night, right? You know, you'd go to the gym and you'd work out and we, you know, Winter and I have done that for, you know, for connecting with spirit. So for, for me personally, it's just been sort of an extension of who I am, like as a person, um, 
my story very briefly is, you know, I, my earliest memory was talking to angels and talking to spirits. I mean, I might've been three years old and I just remember them in my room and talking to them and I'm like, Hey, what's up? And, you know, probably didn't say that, but whatever I said, you know, and for me, it was just kind of normal. Um, and then when I got to be a little bit older, I realized that, well, not everybody is doing this. And the fact that I'm like hugging trees and things, people think I'm kind of weird. So I kind of hid all of this for a little while, but it was always kind of with me. Like I would still talk to them and they would talk to me and my relatives when they crossed over would still talk to me, but I didn't really tell people about it. Um, and then I just went on to lead a normal life and, you know, I went to school, I got my master's degree. I worked as a therapist for many years. i still have to keep my license for that. Um, and then eventually, you know, Spear just kept getting more and more insistent, like you need to do this work. You need to do this work. And I won't go into that whole story, but basically they just kept pushing me and pushing me. And believe me, when Spear wants to get your attention, they're going to get your attention. Things will happen. So things happened and um, I started doing the work and I started training with lots of different mediums and meeting amazing people like Winter and just sort of getting involved in the whole thing. And it's like, if you've ever been involved in a place where it's the right place for you, things just start happening and doors start opening. And I'm not saying it was like, oh, piece of cake, but it just felt like I was flowing in the right direction. And from that, you know, I'm here today and I work all the time and, you know, I'm blessed with lots of clients all over the world and just so grateful to be able to connect with the spirit world and bring healing to the people that are down here because we really need it. So hope that spiel wasn't too long, but that's a little bit about me. Oh, that was great. And actually that's how um, Mari and I met. Uh, we were both training. I think it was with Tony. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Uh, both of we both love him. So uh, yeah. we met in one of his classes. And um, that's one of the uh, delightful side of um, effects of taking classes. Not only do you get in great energy, but you meet great people, a lot of which a lot of whom are like minded because they're there to learn to unfold their mediumship whatever that aspect is for that particular class, whether it's mental, trance, or physical. So um, like Mari, I was wide open as a youngster. I was talking to spirit, listening, interacting. And I just didn't understand that they were um, dead people or the technical term is uh, discarnates because, you know, angels aren't dead. Well, dead people aren't dead either, right? No, just kidding. Um, right. So <laughs> anyway, uh, around five or six, I shut it down as do many, many children because we're going to school and uh, the other kids aren't doing the same thing. And you're starting to develop that part of your brain, which is for math and uh, of social studies and not so much for intuition and connecting with spirit. Um, I'm very forgetful just part of who I am. So I completely forgot all about it. And we never discussed metaphysical topics in my house. Um, it just, it wasn't a prohibited topic. We just didn't talk about it. I missed the whole James Prague, John Edwards on television because it just, you know, that's the, the natural law, like attracts like. So, um, because I wasn't, it wasn't in my life and my thoughts, I wasn't attracting the opportunities like Mari was, was saying that once you put your vibration and focus on something, the universe will bring you opportunities. Uh, so I as well went to college, um, actually right near her, <laughs> I was up in Boston. Um, <laughs> And then I went to law school, became an attorney, opened a law practice, had a child, um, adopted a child a little, a few years later, got very active with my local civic uh, groups, Rotary. I love working with Gift of Life, where we brought the children for heart surgery, uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, both of whom I've done mediumship demonstrations for now at this point. And somewhere 
around my mid thirties. Oh God, I'm aging myself, aren't I? Um, all of a sudden, strange things started happening to me. Uh, I started experiencing the emotions of other people. But I'm not talking about like when you're watching television and you're watching old yeller and the, the, the dog is dying and you're bawling your eyes out. That's sympathy. No, I'm talking about being on a cruise ship with my children and all of a sudden picking up my business partner uh, in New York while I was in the Caribbean, having a, a hissy fit and being upset about something. And, you know, back then it was too expensive to make phone calls. So I had to wait till I was off the boat and back home and, and ask him, I'm like, did you get upset on this date? Da, da, da. And he said, yes. And I had no idea what was going wrong. I, I just was like, this is not possible. It's the twilight zone. So I, I went to the weirdest person I knew, my friend Shauna, who owned a house in Sedona. And um, um, she explained to me. And then from there, I started researching. I went to libraries. See, I always love libraries. I went online. Then I found the spiritualist churches. Then I started sitting for classes. I started demonstrating for them at their services, went to Omega, went finally went to Lilydale and now I go over to Arthur Finley or actually we're online now um, to continue studying and of course I also teach it and I gotta tell you I spent 30 years being um, passive or turned off okay before it reopened or turned itself back on and I never ever want to go back there okay I think it was John Edwards who said Living life without abilities is like being in a black and white TV. Mm -hmm. Once your abilities are open and working and you're experiencing life with all these different dimensions, it's like high definition TV. And I totally concur. I never, ever want to experience life without being psychic and mediumistic. And now, of course, being able to go into the altered state with trance. Um, I just don't want to do that. So I, one of my platforms is um, to encourage people to investigate your own abilities. Not that we're all made the same. You know, you may have a soul plan that doesn't in, involve developing your abilities this lifetime, and that's fine. I think we can all be healers, and and uh, because as long as you're capable of love, you can send healing. And then you can train in different modalities, of course. But um, I just feel that people may be unaware of their abilities based on my own experience. And I had no idea. So I encourage people to take classes, meet one another, um, and live to their fullest potential in this lifetime. Okay, so that's my little spiel. Now, now I understand not everybody has time or energy or finances or this or that because you work, you know, you have to work to support yourself. So not everybody might be able to develop their abilities in this moment. And, you know, that's okay, too, because then you have people like us that are willing to do messages for you, etc. So um, but I always do try to encourage people to investigate their own potential and develop themselves to the fullest that they can. So that's a little bit about me, my philosophy. Oh, and I am a spiritualist. I've, I've uh, uh, become a diehard, die in the wool spiritualist. Um, so that's my training background. That sounds great. I am just answering. Uh, I encourage people to put questions or things they're interested in in the chat. And I'm just answering because I'm slow and old and it takes me a long time to do anything like that. Um, that was awesome, Winter. Yeah, I'm glad. See, we have very much different backgrounds, but we ended up coming to the same place and we are about you know all about serving spirit and helping people that are here on the side and definitely you know again we encourage people to put messages in the chat you can also post on facebook if you're watching on facebook i'm trying to keep an eye on both you know do we'll, we'll all do the best we can here to try to you know keep everything um at towards oh, i'm gonna, gonna respond to something mari if that's sure okay. go ahead 
Okay, so she it was a direct message, but it's kind of cute. Uh, Suzanne Porto um, was just asking if I know another medium who's also an attorney, Gina Barry. Um, she said that, uh, uh, I guess Suzanne is also an attorney. Um, mm -hmm. And when she was in law school, they never shut the door on her. At St. John's Law School, when I, I was the class of 93, we were allowed three absences and yeah they if you were not in there was an attendance taker and they closed the door and if you weren't in your seat um you got marked absent so uh and the door was locked so they did do that in uh my law school back in oh i'm really dating myself now um and i know that um without giving out names once in a while when somebody was having a hard time we might sit in their seat so they wouldn't be marked absent, but they did do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, you know, there's actually a bunch of people that are mediums that are still practicing attorneys. I know a couple other people too. So I don't know, there must be some connection with the law and the spirit world. I don't know, but there's definitely uh, a lot of other people that do it too. Well, actually in the um, spiritualist movement, uh, you know, modern spiritualism started in 1848 with the young Fox sisters um, mm -hmm. communicating with a spirit. And that started the modern um, spiritualist movement. And many people involved with that uh, were attorneys. And oh. we've also got a lot of um, female leaders that were you know, also moving um, uh, trying to get the uh, vote for uh, women um, and abolitionists. Sometimes I lose the words. Um, and they had um, uh, civil rights leaders were very much also involved with spiritualism, which is kind of cool. Um, and not to take over, but uh, Terry, please explain what a spiritual is, spiritualist is. Um, so spiritualism is a religion, philosophy, and science using the modality of mediumship to prove the continuity of life. Spiritualism, um, there's different segments of it or uh, different uh, groups of it. There's like the SNU over in the UK, and they have six statements of um it's not dogma, but um, beliefs. There's the NSAC, the National Spiritualist Association of Churches in the United States. They have nine statements of belief. And the cornerstone, again, is um, using mediumship to prove the continuity of life, believing in the idea of prophecy, believing in the idea of healing, the natural laws, um, redemption. And in New York, spiritualism is codified in the New York religious corporation law. So along with a number of other religions. Um, but that's basically what it is. And uh, for those of you on Long Island, I used to run a spiritual service once a month pre-COVID. And we're just, I'm just waiting for things to settle down and maybe we'll start doing that again. So and I'll let Mari take the next. The, yeah, I'm looking through the questions me? and thank you guys for posting. That's very good. I had one that I wanted to write. Someone asked, what is the hardest part about being involved in the spiritual world? Um, you know, it's just like anything else. There's ups and downs about everything. But for me personally, and I imagine Winter, you know, probably agrees with this, um, is that for me, we're always giving. Like most people that are involved in this type of work, you're always wanting to help others and fix others and not fix them, but, you know, try to give them whatever tools they can to fix themselves. And certainly coming for me from a, a background as a therapist, um, you know, that's always been my goal. I start out all my sessions saying, you know, you know, I'm here for you. I want to do whatever it is that's going to help you, you know, live your best life, whatever answers or whatever you're looking for. So I think for me, one of the difficult parts of being involved in the spiritual world is 
not answering emails at one o'clock in the morning, you know, not coming down. It's like, oh, but I really need a session in X and, you know, and I'm so booked up and I'm like, oh, I'll just add another one. So for me, not sort of over committing myself has been um, a real lesson for me because I would just like keep doing it and keep doing it and grind myself into the ground. And in which case I would be of no use to anybody. So um, that's, you know, that's sort of a lesson that I needed to learn is sort of set boundaries and limitations of what I can do and help as many people as I can, but make sure there's at least a tiny bit left for myself so that I don't poof disappear. So what about you, Winter? What do you think is the hardest part about being involved in the spiritual world? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know because, um, I, I'm a workaholic. Oh, okay. Recognizing <laughs> that in myself. Um, you know, but I, even before I did this kind of work, when I was a young attorney, I had my own firm. I was a single mom. I adopted my youngest daughter as a single mom. I had Crohn's disease at that time. And I also had my other daughter from my, um, other marriage and um, yeah, I got involved with, with Rotary and I was doing 20 hours a week with that, you know, bringing the kids. So I know um, I got cranky sometimes, but um, so I tend to do a lot and um, that hasn't really changed too much. Um, I love meeting people as a Gemini. So I love being able to meet the spirits. I love experiencing um, the altered state and doing trance. I find I am totally fascinated by seeing pictures of me with having been transfigured by spirit. I just think it's amazing. And I want to know how far they're able to to go uh you know and uh, with us as a partner in that um you know basically our job is to kind of get out of the way but you know needless it's also we're consenting to do that i want to see the human potential in that how far can we go so my mind is just you know super curious about that um I, I honestly, I think this is, you know, I do a second business, but they're actually pretty easy on me. My law practice was easy on me. My clients were great. We had one out of 750 was bad. So I've been very blessed. I haven't run into too many difficult situations. So I'm not, um, I don't know what the hardest part is. Maybe the hardest part is experiencing the depth of your client's um, grief because you're, you're genuine and you're raw and you're open. So maybe, and I think, you know, all grief is, is devastating, but I think the worst one would be a, a parent having lost a child. So maybe that might be the most difficult part is, um, you know, you want to bring that child and reconnect that parent in that moment. Um, but as a mother, um, I just, it just rips you apart that this beautiful soul is experiencing this. And yeah, I can shift myself into that spiritual mindset. Oh, well, maybe that's their soul's plan, but it just, yeah, I don't care. I'm a mother. I would be devastated to lose one of my kids you know? Exactly. So that I think would be my answer. I know I kind of got around that, <laughs> but um, that's the, one of the hardest parts because there's so many times where I'm connecting with clients in, in the part of themselves that is just so grief stricken. Now that's not all my work. Other work I have is just, you know, I'm connecting clients with their loved ones whom they miss, but there's not that rawness to it it's just that it's it's genuine oh god mom's there or dad's here you know so but i i i think those really grief-stricken parents that's and i have so much i have profound um respect for the therapists that help these folks because they're dealing with it client after client after client exactly i was just checking in on facebook here to see what was going on in my lack of a technological savvy way. 
make sure we're not missing any comments. Um, I think there's a couple comments on the page there. Um, yeah, no, I think that's a good answer. And I think honestly, my training as a therapist has been really helpful because although the sitting in the grief is never fun, I've been trained for that and I've been doing that for a very long time. So I'm very comfortable like holding that space. You know, they call it sitting in the mud. And so I feel like that training for me has really prepared me for working with spirit because I was sort of already holding space for people that were suffering in a lot of different ways. Um, but this is almost like a different level. This takes it to a different level when you're connecting with spirit or connecting with animals. Um, and honestly, I think we're all here, you know, to sort of work in our own way. You know, everybody finds, or I hope everybody finds the medium that they connect with the most. And, you know, I might not be the medium for everybody or winter, or, you know, you have to find who, who resonates with you, who you're drawn to. That's an important thing. You know, people say to me, oh, I want to get a reading, but I'm not sure. It's like, well, you know, first of all, if you getting the nudge to get a reading, that's sort of your soul sort of letting you know that you probably need some of that input. Um, but also find somebody that you connect with. You know, you like your their website, or you're drawn to them, you don't know why. That's sort of spirit nudging you to be like, hey, this is a good person that can help you move forward in, you know, whatever, whatever thing you're trying to move forward with in your life or what your soul is yearning to express. So so I think that's very helpful. Um, I'm looking at the time and I'm looking, there's a couple other questions here. Um, there's one question that says, I've been trying to open my third eye. I see vibrant colors of black, purple, and sometimes yellow. I'm stuck. Any advice on opening fully? Well, that is an awesome question. Um, and I think everybody goes through, not everybody, but a lot of people go through different levels of stuckness at different times. And, you know, my recommendation is, you know, number one is you want to kind of get out of your head a little bit, because for me, for a lot of working mediums, it's like when you're connecting, you're connecting in your body, like the seat of the soul is more centered in your body, in your heart chakra. It's like if you're thinking about stuff, that's more your ego or your mind or stuff everybody has told you over the years. It's not really your soul. And so for me, what I teach people you know, I teach different classes as well, but it's really about getting out of the head. It's like taking that deep breath and as you exhale, drop your shoulders and allow yourself to fall into your body. Now that's just a 10 second little clip, but basically any way you can get into your body is gonna help you open up that third eye, is gonna help you open up that spiritual portal. So whether that's meditation, you know, grounding, walking in the woods, you know, and for meditation. So yeah, I say that I know 80% of the people are like, ugh, like, I'm not going to sit there. Like, you don't have to sit there like a monk and go, oh, you know, you don't have to do that. You know, you can just sit and listen to calming music and just get into the breathing. It can be three minutes, you know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Even I tell my clients washing dishes, if you're in the quiet and the, the monotonous kind of movements of washing the dishes or vacuuming can be like a meditation because you're not in your head like, oh my God, I gotta go to the supermarket. I'm worrying about this and blah, blah, blah. You're more into the motion of the thing. And that is very calming and can help you get into your body. So that's sort of my number one recommendation is try to get into your body, do a couple things that would help you in terms of uh, meditate, walking in the woods, uh, you know, doing anything silent, practicing your breathing, and also maybe finding a development circle. Like, you know, I know um, Winter teaches a bunch of stuff. I teach, you know, intro to psychic development. I don't know where you're located. Um, there are different places that might offer a development circle in person now. Um, uh, you know, feel free to message either one of us. I'm sure we could probably point you in the right direction. But definitely getting more in touch with your soul is going to help it, help open that third eye up and help messages to come in and just like your whole world's going to change. So what do you think about that winter? I concur with everything you said. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, seeing colors in the beginning is typical of your clairvoyance opening. That's what I was seeing when I first started opening with the clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as um, I am actually starting a beginner um, psychic and mediumship development class online on Tuesday evenings, March 15th. If you'd like uh, more information about it, just email me or message me through my site, my website or through Facebook. Um, 
I have a private group for people that want to practice. And it, I have four practice circles on there. They don't cost anything. They're run by students and a couple of other members. Um, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Mondays at one and every other Saturday. So if you wanna join, it's um, psychic and mediumship practice group by Winterbrook, okay? Um, it's not for you to go to receive messages. It's for you to go and sit. And if you get so moved, try to give a message. The people that go to these circles are extremely supportive and they range from beginners to working mediums that just want to drop in and they want to try their own, uh, a new technique or something. So um, there's no charge and it's uh, through the private Facebook group and they use Zoom. So I would recommend that um, because, you know, a lot of spiritualist churches, like Mari said, uh, they would be used to offer very low cost um, development classes and circles. But now with the COVID restrictions, which are gently being lifted, but they're not back yet, um, online works just as well. There's only a few things I don't think you can do online, <laughs> but um, we've been trying to use, uh, we're using the online for the physical development now uh, because, you know, some of the nights have uh, been kind of lousy with the weather and I have a girl that travels two hours to sit in my private group. So, and another one's driving an hour from the other direction. Um, I don't want them to put themselves in jeopardy. So we're trying it online until the, you know, storms finish. As Mari said, every Friday it snows in Massachusetts. <laughs> yes, it does. And it's snowing again today. It's crazy. We had oh. 65 degree temperatures yesterday and today we have a foot of snow. So I don't know. Um, do you want to do the card? One of our little- Yeah, I was just gonna, thinking of show, that. We're going to have a couple of segments. She's going to explain. I know. Well, I was trying to, we, we wanted to sort of give a little, you know, explanation of who we are and what we kind of do. Um, the show, we're also going to be bringing guests on, you know, as we do more shows and we're definitely open if people are interested and, in, you know, maybe an angel intuitive or, you know, a past life expert, or I don't know, just put in the comments or message one of us if there's uh, something particular you're interested in, and we will try to get that person on. Um, because, you know, there's lots of people and they have lots of information. We don't know everything. Um, and the other topic, uh, or the other, I guess, uh, section of the show that we wanted to talk about is message of the day, spirit chat message of the day. So we thought it would be fun if uh, we pulled a card and sort of talk about a message for the collective, like what the world needs to know. And so while everything was going on, I pulled this card. Hopefully you can see says stand your ground and this is uh john holland's deck who i love and trained with um the psychic tarot love this deck i have a million decks but i always use this one um and i think it's really interesting that that's the card that you know that i pulled you know forget about what's going on in ukraine like uh, clearly that's a message for that in terms of globally but i think there's an opportunity for all of us when things come into our life that, you know, we have an opportunity to stand up and fight for what we believe in. I don't mean fight in a violent way, but just stand up for our beliefs or just be like, well, I'm just going to sit here and not do anything. And I feel, it feels to me like, you know, and a lot of mediums are sort of have said similar things that there's like a development, there's a development of the earth. There's a change of things that are coming right now and opening and awakening, if you will. And standing your ground is part of that because if you feel drawn to these things, if you feel connected to spirit, or you feel like, I know there's more it to life than just working nine to five and watching TV and going to bed and waking up and doing it all over again, um, then that's something that you need to support within yourself. And like I was saying earlier, when we first started, it's like, you know, when I was younger, I was like, oh, people look at me as weird and, you know, I better hide this. But at some point, it's important to be true to yourself. And to me, that's sort of what this card is really talking about, is about standing your personal ground. There's the standing your ground in the world in terms of what the world is fighting, you know, good versus evil, et cetera. Um, but there's also standing your personal ground and about what your soul is really counting on you to do. Because we're all here for a reason, you know, whether you believe it or not. 
we are here, we all have a purpose and it's important to, to embrace that. And I know that it's hard for a lot of people and I know everybody's on their different you know, part of the path, but if you're kind of getting that nudge and that means spirit's like, hey, you know, you can do more, you can do this and forget about what everybody else has to say. Sure, some people are gonna think you're weird. I'm sure some people think we're weird, but I don't care. So, cause this is sort of my Dharma. This is what I was put here to do. And I'm sure that winter feels the same way. Um, and so that's sort of, I, I feel like the, the message for the collective is stand your ground, stand up for what you believe in, <clears throat> support what's important to you. And, you know, fortune favors the brave. So put yourself out there and you'll never know what happens. So what do you think, Winter? I think that's the, just the greatest card ever that to be pulled on all <laughs> days. And, um, I agree. I mean, also, we're having the year of the tiger in the Chinese um, astrology, and we are so going to have an astrologist on at some point. Um, oh, totally. I love astrology. Mm, I don't too. do it professionally, but I love it. Um, so stand your ground also means, I think, to pursue your goals. Yes. OK, and the year of the tiger, from what I've been told, is all about the energy assisting you and to take some risk because um, you'll be successful. So stretch yourselves. And again, that goes back to my um, statements before about potential. You know, you've got to risk a little to, to see where your potential lies. And the, the truth of the matter is my father would always tell me, um, well, look, you know what? So what? If you try it and you fail, at least you tried, okay? You're no better off than you were before you tried. But if you don't try, you'll never know if you would have succeeded. And, you know, and they have all the stories about the famous stars, like the basketball player star was told he couldn't play basketball and now he makes millions off it. And um, I know I gave a whole sermon about that once. So um, just try it. Use the energy of this year to lift your wings. And don't worry if it doesn't, you know, I mean, don't roll the dice on your stock portfolio or your savings, <laughs> but certainly, um, you know, try something new. If there's always something you wanted to do, do it. If you've got the time and the means otherwise, then go ahead. Fortune is smart. Sounds good. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so yes, Terry, Joanne Wolf. <laughs> Um, I know you have a couple, of, I saw a couple of comments on your Facebook page. I don't know if you can see them um, or if you want oh. to answer them, Winter. Okay. Um, I've been trying to monitor that too. So I apologize, folks. I have a question for Winter. Um, how did trance present itself to you? Did you learn about trance or did it happen naturally? Oh, this is a story. Well. Um, I kept getting experiences. Um, I, you know, spirit would step in. Um, I guess the worst one was my father. Um, so I was at my nephew's funeral and my dad had wanted to come through, but my brother doesn't um, really like mediumship. I mean, he'll have a, my business cards and he'd hand you my business cards. And if you like mediumship, that's fine. But he didn't. So I wasn't going to do anything. And um, my father at the last minute of the funeral after the, we're standing around the grave, he really wanted to make his presence known. And I was sitting there and I was trying to send all this love to my brother and my sister-in-law for the hard, difficult path they had, you know, losing their son. And all of a sudden I felt my father come in. I just was moved to the side. And the next thing you know, it was raining. I was singing at the top of my lungs, singing in the rain. I'm just singing in the rain. Don't worry, you will be happy again, changing the words. And I was so upset because I really didn't want that to happen. 
And I was so mad at my father, who was in spirit, obviously. I wouldn't talk to him. I signed up for Tony and uh, Stockwell and James Von Prague's trance class, like the next day. I said, well, we just can't be happening. And um, yeah, I had to do like two days later, I had to do my first library presentation. It was like nearly 100 people there. And my father was on the stage and I'm like, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. So um, that's actually how it happened. It, it, you know, my dad kind of, you know, when he taught me how to drive, I fired him after the first driving lesson because he took me to the curviest road there is in Northport. And I, I asked our um, cleaning lady to help me learn to drive. And I adore my father to this day. And I'll always talk about him, but I was pretty annoyed. And I do understand his position. He wanted to let his son know he was there. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, um, I just try to respect people and their beliefs. So I don't try to push the abilities on anybody. They have to kind of ask me. So my dad was a little pushy on that. But if I had to learn the lesson, I'm glad I learned it with my dad. So, um, you know, my dad's done a quite a few other really great things too, which I'm sure I'll share over time, but not today. But that is what prompted me. I knew it was going that way, but that was kind of like the, oops, I needed to know how to not have it happen in an inappropriate place. I mean, granted, I was, it was highly emotional. It was my nephew's funeral, but um, that's how it happened. So. Wow, that's a very cool story, Winter. Awesome. I mean, my nephew's been around me since, so he wasn't upset, but, you know. And I had other people at the funeral. All of my sister-in-law's family kept coming up to me asking if Ben was around. But uh, I just, as I said, I was trying to respect the wishes of the parent on that one. So, but things like that do happen. So if I share this with you, don't, if you're going through something and like Mari said, when spirit wants something, you know, they can really give you a nudge. I don't think spirit, I think that was my father. Um, I don't think that was spirit. <laughs> so, yeah. and I understand, you know, it was his son, but are we going to do mini readings? Some readings. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely do some readings. I don't know if there's anybody, someone had messaged about, um, I'm trying to look at the messages here. I don't know if anybody messaged on your Facebook page about reading, if somebody was interested, but um, there was a woman. Now, just so everybody know, I usually do pet readings through photographs. I don't know why. That's just what I started doing, and that's like my thing. Um, so if you're interested in a pet reading, feel free to, I don't know if you can post a picture in the chat or you can post it on my Facebook page um, so I can see a picture. Um, otherwise, I don't know if there's people that just want a sort of a general reading or something in particular. Yeah, Laura, um, in the in the Zoom room, Laura would love a reading, and she doesn't. Um... Can you see the chat in the Zoom room, Mari? Yes, I can. I was just scrolling. All right. So, do you want to do Laura? This said Ed said he would love one too. That. That's fine. Um, let's see. Laura, if you're in the Zoom room, I love to work by hearing the voice, if that's OK. Yes, thank you. OK. Um, Laura, would you understand a mother in spirit? Yes. Because uh, I have a woman drawing close to me, and I do feel she's mother-like. And um, I want to say she's jumping up. Oh, goody, goody. We got called on. So I feel like she would demonstrate her excitement about things when she was here. Would that sound yeah. about right? Yes, it does. And I also feel that your mom was an, oh, she was a neat freak, but she wasn't judgmental. So if she came into my house, she wouldn't say a word. She would just straighten up my house for me. <laughs> Probably, I have, six, yeah. I have six pets. So it gets a little, <laughs> a little undone. Um, but if you walked into her house, everything would be put in its proper place. That is true. All right. And uh, one of the things about your mom, people loved to talk to her because she wasn't that she wasn't judgmental and she would just listen. I feel like she cut a piece of pie and um, your cake, you know, have a cup of coffee and um, just sit and listen. Yeah. 
And she would never offer her advice unless you asked. She would just say, "Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm, oh dear. Oh dear, yeah, I see. Mm -hmm." And then if you ask, what do you think I should do? She would come up with some very salt of the earth, wise advice. Yes. Okay. So she comes in and she gives, she just wants to kiss you on the cheek. And say, I love you. I'm proud of you because you've been trying to balance a few plates these days. And I mean, plates metaphorically, as far as trying to take care of this one and that one and do, you know, plus work. Um, And then you just, another thing just happened and you're thinking, I can't manage it. There's too much on my plate. Mm Mm-hmm. And your mother wants you to know you not only have her in spirit assisting you, but I feel like you have your dad in spirit. Um, My grandfather. Okay. Her dad in spirit. Yep. Thank you. And a bunch of other older females that used to pray a lot. They're all sending energy to you. She also wants you to know that come April, One of the things that has been a lot of work and and worry or concern is going to gently kind of go away. It's going to resolve. You won't have to do anything. Okay. Are you, do you understand which one she's referring to? Because she's telling me you'll know. I don't know. Okay. I I feel like it's a younger generation. Okay. Okay. So that worry is going to resolve itself and, um, just focus on the new things coming in and what you're doing. Don't, because that will resolve itself and we'll be fine. Good. Okay. So I want to leave her with her blessings and her love. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming on today. Very nice winter. Love it. Thanks for getting it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks for getting it started. So I'm trying to scroll through the comments here. And uh, Susan is on here and she wants a message from her cat. Now I do give my preface about the photos. So I prefer to work through photos, but I am feeling something coming in from the cat. And I know, I feel like we've connected before on a different event. um, And you were also looking for a message for that. So, um, so as I'm sort of entering now, the kitty's name is Squeaky, which is actually very, and that's also why I'm drawn to it because I had a cat named Squeak. So I feel like there's some connection with that as well. Um, as I'm sort of connecting with that energy, it's interesting. I'm feeling, and you know, if I'm looking over here, that's because that's where I connect to spirit. So it's not that I don't think you're all beautiful as I do, but that's sort of my thing. So I'm not ignoring you. Um, but as I'm sort of connecting with Squeaky's energy, it's interesting because you know he's showing me like that there's a very protective piece about him. There's something he's telling me like I really I need to take care of my mom. I mean, obviously there's, you know, he's a cat and he's not like, you know, taking you to the doctor's office or something, but, you know, there is a piece about that protection that he's making me aware of. So I feel like he would sort of sit and watch and make sure that everything was okay. There's some piece about that. And I don't know if you want to, um, if you could unmute your microphone, if you want to talk to answer so I can know, or. He uh, was always with me, always. Always okay. had to be near me. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm seeing him sort of sitting there watching, watching over you, making sure everything is OK. Um, it's interesting. He's talking to me about a medical piece. So I don't know if he's specifically talking about you with having medical issues that you were going through or if it was him that he's talking about, because he keeps talking to me about something medical going on. So I don't know if it was him that was going to the doctors all the time or if it was you and he was sort of there comforting you. Do you understand that? Um. Not really, but there's certain situations maybe he's referring to that's outside of him and me, outside of us. Okay, because you're just saying medical, medical is what I was hearing from him. Um, And there is also some piece about, it's interesting because it's like he's showing me like a door and there's like a crack underneath the door with light coming under it. So there's some piece about him like chasing that light. And I'm not sure why they're giving me that, why they're showing me that picture. I'm clairvoyant, so I see things energetically. And energetically, showing me a door with some light coming underneath it. So it's almost like that. I'm not sure. Do you understand that piece? I, I do. Me that? I, I do. And if, I, not, I know we're not supposed to give information, but um, 
the reason why he's passed, uh, he was, um, because I did not open a door, I could have stopped him getting killed by a coyote. Oh. I mis misjudged the situation. So that's why I feel guilty. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's like, and the way that it works is, you know, at least for me and everyone winter works differently, I'm sure. Um, is I just, they give me pictures. They give me pictures, images, little pieces of information. Um, and I see it energetically in the space. And then like, I have to interpret it because like, it's not my story. So I have no clue what they're talking about, but that's what he just showed me the door with a light coming under it. Um, and thank you for that explanation. Cause now, you know, my human can understand what he's talking about, but he's also like, he's so loving, you know, I do feel like you did adopt him and that he had a possibly an abusive background because he's bringing me back here. My arm's probably doing really weird things right now. Um, and you know, he's, he's talking to me about that and, you know, but he's saying, but as he came to you and as he connected with you, it's like you were able to sort of bring that love out from him. So it's like, he always had this huge heart but he had to sort of keep it hidden and sheltered because of the abusive background that he was in. So it's almost like he's saying, when I came to you, I became a different cat or I became the cat that I needed to be and always was, is what he's talking to me about. Um, and there's also a huge gratitude piece with him as well. He's showing me a big heart, he's grateful. I know you just mentioned that you feel very guilty about it, but he's saying, you know, without you, cause I feel like that you rescued him. There's some piece about rescue he's talking to me about yeah. and he's saying without you he would have languished is what he's telling me and that like you were essential to him becoming this new cat and to his new life is what he's telling me so he's saying mom don't feel guilty he's like things happen the way they happen and you know I'm certainly not God and I can't explain everything and bad you know like as Tony Stockwell would say sometimes bad things just happen and that's sort of where I'm holding so, but he's saying, he's like, don't, don't hold on to that guilt. He's like, that guilt is not for you because you already did so much for me that there's no way I could ever repay that anyway. And he doesn't want you holding on to that. And it's just important for you to know that he's also very much around you. And I know that you're very intuitively connective because um, he's telling me that he's still around you, especially at night. And there's some piece about like rubbing the back of your hair or rubbing your face he's making me aware of. Um, and if you're able to sort of sit quietly at night, he's saying when you're lying down, he's there. He's telling me specifically, he's making me aware of this part of my body, sort of snuggling up against you, almost like holding vigil. There's some piece about sitting there and holding vigil for you and still keeping watch over you. So I hope that was helpful to you. Yes, and one, wonderful. Yeah, I did rescue him. I did rescue him. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I found him in my rose garden and I pampered him from that time on so until the end can i just ask you a quick question is there anything about a bell do you see anything or any information about a bell does that have you has that come into your it has your, not because if it okay. had i would have mentioned it he okay. kept showing me a big heart though heart. he kept showing me like he's your heart cat there's some piece about a heart he keeps showing me can, and almost like you would see hearts in different places like in can, a puddle on the ground or something like can, that i i where he was killed I, I drew a heart where he was killed on the side oh, okay. of, of the bill, on my house yes thank you so much great oh thank you, thank so, you much. so much thank, thank you. you for being here so um winter are you Fantastic. still there i lost you <laughs> me there no, you I'm are here. okay yeah. all right okay so, so um who is next and i know we're probably running out of time so we want to do maybe one or two more we're going to try to keep the show to about an hour um ideally we're going to bring on you know uh other presenters you know special speakers and talk about each week maybe talk about a or each show talk about a different topic in the spiritual world um and then also try to do some readings at the end and spirit chat card of the day we'll try to do too so um yeah. is there somebody else that uh i already lost track of who was next winter um well the, on the facebook page there was oh, okay. so the problem with the facebook page is uh tara costello are you still there sweetheart well they can always watch the replay also all right um she just kind of uh spoke to me so to speak because apparently she was in um 
almost in a car accident this morning. She mm. was thanking spirit for keeping her safe. And that just kind of popped out to me. So, oh, she's still there. That's good. Okay. So I'm going to stretch a little because it's the year of the tiger. And I've done this before, but I always love to hear the voice and I can't hear the voice when they're on Facebook, but oh, well, you can do it. Um, <laughs> I can do it. No, I've done it before. Okay. We all, as Mary pointed out, we all have our ways of working and also our preferred ways of working. Yeah. Uh, but I really want to do, give something to Tara because I know how that can be. The other day, I nearly hit a deer. It walked right in front of my car oh. and I jammed on the brakes and my head almost hit the, it was a baby deer. Oh God. Um, yeah. We have a lot of them around me, but anyway, yeah. so I, I get, you get rattled, right? Um, so I do feel that you had a grandmother around you, Tara, and I feel like she was instrumental in, um, making sure that you yourself was not injured. I don't know if your car was, um, damaged in this car accident, but, um, she was instrumental in protecting you from harm. She's letting me know. Now, this grandmother, um, I feel was on the shorter side of height. So I want to put her around, oh, five foot one, give or take an inch. And um, despite her demure height, that's the right word, um, she was strong in spirit and will. So she's a force to be reckoned with. Uh, and when she was on the earth plane, that's just the way she was as well. So, um, you know, her kids, she was very strict with them. Obviously, the grandchildren, she was less strict with, but you still sat up at the table. You finished dinner. Um, oh, you were not hurt at all. And neither was the car. Good. Okay. And, um, you know, she had set certain rules that you live by. She's very strict about, um, you know, you go to church, da, 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 da. And I want to call her old school. And um, I see that she is a strong protector of the children and great-grandchildren in the family. Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, okay? So know that she's with you. And I do believe you do know that she's with you. I think she's come through from spirit, through other mediums for you. Um, and she's on the job. And she actually had quite the sense of humor because she's like, yep, I hope I'm on the job. Um, however, she'd like to have a little rest. She'd like to put her feet up. So she said, you need to drive a little bit slower because mm -hmm. it's not your driving technique, but you have to be careful. The other drivers, they're not always um, as watchful. And uh, she's giggling with that a little bit because you do like to listen to your music and you do have a tendency to go maybe a little bit faster than, the, than um, she would prefer. Um, yes, you just said yes. Okay, so you understand all this information. Great. Uh, so I just want to give grandma to you and let you know you do have a guardian angel in your grandmother along with your other spirit team. And um, your grandma wants you to get back to your practice. So I feel that you actually used to meditate and you hear me loud and clear. Good. Um, and grandma has more to say to you and you do have abilities to um, receive communication. So chop, chop, chop. And um, that's like something your grandmother would have done. Okay. I don't know. I don't do that. But um, she would like you to slow the mind down. She says slow down, but I think what she means is your mind, slow your mind down, take uh, some time twice a week and in the evening, it's good for your overall health and it will enable her to come through to you along with some other loved ones that you're missing in spirit. All right. Including a dog. So I'm going to leave grandma's love and her message and her promise for future communication directly with you. If you put the, um, if you slow down and allow the time for it. Okay. So God bless. All right. All so, right. All right. Very nice. You know what I wanted to do? Um, well, I wanted to let them know that we have the date for our next show. Um, yes. And that will be April 12th. Now we don't expect you to remember. So we will be sending out the um, flyers. The next show will have it 
connected with the streaming service. Um, you know, we'll have our IT people, i.e. Our, our wonderful children who are really smart on this stuff, um, assisting We're us. We're working with, on it. We're working on it. Hey, I'm my father's daughter and I brag about my kids. And my dad's a great guy. I don't want to, that story I told you to, to think otherwise. Um, but uh, we are going to do animal communication as the topic. And um, so if, you know, we'll put this in the flyer that we create um, and to remind you, uh, but if you could, if you want to come, uh, it would be helpful if you had photos of your pets that you're hoping. Yes. Um, now we're going to be reading both um, incarnate and discarnate. AKA living and crossed over. <laughs> I like to use the proper uh, terminology. I, know you but I like do. that. I'm crossed over works. And loose. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you have a photo of them, uh, that would be awesome. Now, um, to connect with us, because uh, I know that we both do newsletters, and this is something we would have in our, our newsletters. If you'd like to go on the list so you get that in the email box, I only send mine out once a month. I don't want to, you know, drown you in stuff. Um, it would be Winter Brook Psychic Medium at gmail.com. That's my email. Or you can go to my website, Winter Brook Medium. And there's a prefabricated uh, thing where you can just send me an email, however you want to do it. Um, and I will add you to my e uh, newsletter list. And Mari, um, could you give them your contact? I absolutely can. So yeah, I think this has been awesome. I hope everybody had a good time. Um, yeah, the best way to get a hold of me is through my website, mediummari.com, M-E-D-I-U-M-M-A-R-I.com. Um, and you can find me on all the usual socials, you know, on Facebook, obviously. Um, but I'm also on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and Twitter, and it's all mediummari. Type that in there. Um, you'll be able to find me. And um, yeah, I have all my events listed there. I know Winter said she does a lot of classes. No wonder you're a workaholic. You got like things morning, noon, and night, 24 hours a day going on. So um, I, I have stuff. I, I do a mentorship that I offer, you know, every sort of semester of, of the year. My winter one has been filled, but I am taking people for the spring. If people are interested in learning about animal communication or psychic mediumship development. That is like a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing with me. And we sort of figure out, you know, what time works the best. So it is very flexible. Um, and I do offer, you know, different intro classes. I haven't put one up for a little bit. I'll probably do one um, over the summer. Intro to animal communication is, you know, a big favorite because people always love to come to me for their animals, which I love to work with. Um, and, uh, you know, check out all my events on my website. I have a couple different podcasts. I'm always doing podcasts coming up and I have a radio show coming up on, on May 8th. And so check out my website, mediummari.com and you will find all the info about me and my newsletter, et cetera, et cetera. So this was fun. Yeah, this was great. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We will, um, upload the recordings to our, um, YouTube channels, each of us. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, mine may not go up till tomorrow, but um, it will be up there if you want to um, share it with someone or if you, you know, if we gave a reading and you want your friend wants to hear our answer to your reading. And I just love doing this. So thank you guys, because it's kind of like, you know, I could talk to dead people all day long, but it's really no fun unless I have the living to like kind of bring the messages through, right? Exactly. So, um, yeah, thanks, Mari. I really appreciate you reaching out and, and starting this one. Um, and I'm just thrilled to be here with everybody. And God bless. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody who tuned in. Feel free to share it. I'll get it uploaded to my YouTube channel as soon as I figure out how to do it. Or one of my children does it for me because, you know, my kids are like, Mom, why are you spending three hours doing it? I could do it in five minutes. So I think I need to let that go a little bit. But it will be uploaded and um, April 12th, our next show. Feel free to message each of us with questions or topics or speaker information. Um, yeah, this was awesome. 
I'm very excited and look forward to seeing all you guys in the, uh, in the cyberspace there or in person sometime. All right. Take care. Bye. Thanks for coming.